Hey kids, it's Justin James. It's Justin Explains looking at Magenta Source Part 2. So about so many years ago, earlier video, I did, I only had these two. I had my first Magenta Source, this guy here, which is a Collect Day 2010. And when Jurassic World came out with theirs, I was like, well, let's do a video. Well, since then, I found more. Uh, let's see. Cool. I've done a video already on Magenta Source Part 1, going over the history of its discovery, certain features on it, but here I'm just looking at these new figures. So, first of all, this guy is from Rapid City. I went on a dig in South Dakota. Uh, well, that was our base of, like, gathering, and then we went off into the, you know, the, 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 the Wyoming. But there was a toy shop there in the main city. In Rapid City, if you don't know, uh, there are statues of all the presidents on, like, every corner, so it's really a cool place to go to in general. But I went to I went I was in town for like a day and I and I went looked around for toy stores and I found this guy here. This is a I want to say Mojo. Let's see, I don't see a name anywhere. Oh, there is this hidden way in there. Oh, it's Schleit. Never mind, Schleit. And so the jaw articulates. Now the problem with this guy, in my opinion, one is it's shaped really weird. Two, the arms are way too long. The family known as the Bellasaurids, These guys have tiny arms, not only for the animal in general, but proportion to the body. So we make fun of Tyrannosaurus Rex for having tiny arms, but the truth is, proportionally speaking, their arms are smaller. So this guy's arms goes like way down to here. Um, the Jurassic World toy gets it right actually, where it has that look right there, those tiny little nubbins right there. That's what it should be. So that's my first knock on this guy too. I'm not sure really turn it I mean, it's like a I mean, maybe it's like a opposing thing where the tail is going like sideways like this. So I think that's what they're doing with the, with the balance there, because most of the pictures of them show them with this kind of sausage long body playing like this. Uh, but what they get right is that there are the correct number of fingers. And so you have four digits, but the, the last one has no claw. That's really good. There's three toes in the front. There's one duke claw in the back. Uh, there's that one horn between the, between the eyes, which is one of the features that is what people call Majungasaurus. But Genethalus was the original name, especially with these remains. It's really Genethalus now. If I keep trying to say that because I knew that first name first. So the idea is that um, that feature is one of the things that makes it stand out as one of the ugliest, the quote, ugliest dinosaurs, you know. But overall, interesting. I like the fact that the nose is very blunt, truncated. That's something that a Bellasaurus, the family group, have really well. But that was something I bought many years ago. Funny enough, right after I shot the first video, because of course, yeah, as soon as I shoot a video, the next week, a new version of the figure comes out usually. But I was in Dinosaur Ridge, Colorado, which is, if you've ever been before, great place. I'm going to make a page on my website about it, where you literally walk up a ridge, and it's Jurassic to Cretaceous. You can, you can go up the ridge and see different rock layers, and there's footprints, and there's bones, and there's like a volcanic ash layer. It's a really great site. I'm going to put, when I get the, when I get the, that page on my website set up, I'm going to go back and put the link in the description. Now, that's where I found this guy in the gift shop. Now this, I am pretty sure there's a PNSO figure somewhere that's way more accurate. But looking at this guy with his stomach, he is a Safari 20... 2022. So, my friend got married last year, and on the way back from Colorado, I got this guy, Nelson Ridge. This is the most accurate Majungasaurus figure in my collection. I love everything about it. The arms are tiny. Actually, they could be a little smaller, but they're close enough. The long tube-shaped body is great. The way the skull has this bump on it, and it's kind of ugly. Uh, so, the term for that is on the skull surface where a mm, <clears throat> a raptor, a dromaeosaur, very smooth surface over, over, the, over the nose. This guy has what we call a rogus, R-O-G-U-S-E, rogus, like a bumpy texture, which applies to some kind of growth on top of that too. So the fact that the skull here has that kind of bumpy face structure is really important too. It's been theorized it's something like the, you know how turkeys have or the uh, the kind of waddly, the kind of loose material. That's been theorized, but at least there's some extra stuff there. It's not a smooth surface. So that shows that really well. Um, again, the, the the tail's not it's balancing, so it's like a weird halfway turn look, which is fine. Uh, three toes in the front, the dew claw on the back, I like the way it looks like a uh, a roosters. I don't know why. It's not science. I just think it's really cool. And so overall, really good figure. Nice balance. Um, my friend Jim shares one with me, who, who, who I shout out all the time because he buys me figures. So, uh, so I got him one. Yeah, see, back and forth. Friendship. 
And so the idea is that this guy is a perfect example, in my opinion, of this specimen based on what we know about it as of right now. The final figure to go over is our the new Jurassic World figure. And with the official scissors, Jurassic James, we will look at this guy and free, free it from his bondage, caging. Yes, okay. Sometimes they have the feet attached. That's really annoying. And then let's put the... Yeah, it should fall forward. There's no tail. But until then, we must, for safety reasons, receive the sword. There we go. And the tail, let's see. It's... Actually, this might make it a lot easier. When I worked in college in light construction, light construction, the guy who trained me, Benny, was like, never use your hands when you have a tool to do it. Because you need your hands with your life. There we go. Got to start it. And the tail is from the Jurassic World Chaos Theory. Uh, huzzah. Now, let's see. And there we go. The tail put in there, instantly balanced. It's as if they evolved those tails to help them balance and walk and run. So... There's a DNA code there, because obviously... Now, the real focus for me is comparing these two, because the same company made the same figure. I mean, there are other Abelosaurs, but Majungasaurus is one of the top, like, five most well-known ones, so I, I'll give them that. But as far as design goes, it's like two parts of the same coin kind of thing, where on the one hand, I like this sausage-shaped body, but it has all these extra bits. Now, to be fair... I don't know what's triggering it, actually. Anyway, uh, to be fair, like, this row of these things here, now, do you know in the tail, the bumps coming up from the tail are called neural spines, the ones going down are called chevrons. I'm not sure if these would be supposed to be chevrons that are extending beyond the skeleton, because that wouldn't be a thing. We would They would be encased in muscle and skin, or if it's just loose skin bits for display or uh, breaking up their pattern from predators in the tree. Now, the only thing with that is um, when we do see animals with designs that break up patterns, they're usually prey items. And this is the largest predator in its environment, so it wouldn't need to really hide from other anything bigger than that, basically. Because most of Bellosaurus in Africa, South America, had larger predators than them hunting them, or hunting other things and could turn on them. This guy is, the, as far as we know, the biggest predator in Madagascar at the time in late Cretaceous. Um, it is from the Methrichian, the very end Cretaceous, so it is a contemporary of T-Rex and Triceratops. They are in North America, he's in Madagascar doing his thing. Do you know Madagascar was an island back then? Uh, one thing to point out real quickly is, let's see, if you look here, Earth, birthplace of the human race. Madagascar was right here, India was right there, Australia was right there, they broke apart. So, so Madagascar has been an island for most of its history, well, not most of its history, from the time of Cretaceous period, at least, right? It's been an island. And so the idea is that these dinosaurs were isolated from others, but the fact that they are bellosaurs, Southern Hemisphere, that makes sense. On that note, I want to point out, this guy has the arms, again, very tiny. I like that a lot. Uh, it should, the torso should be a little bit more truncated, more long like this. But other than that, I mean, the, the feet have the three close in the front, do claw in the back. Um, the tail, they got rid of all the extra bits, which, uh, yeah, I don't really mind weird scales. I don't think they've found skin of a so I'm not really sure about that in that sense. The skull... It seems a little longer on this one. I don't know why. But, again, they had very short skulls. I, they're like bulldogs, the, the Bellasaur group, compared to other, like, Allosaurus or anything else. But, once again, I want to point out this little comparison of family trees. So, the, so the Bellasaurus have done really well in the Jurassic World line. Uh, we have, uh, from South, from later South America, uh, the Kevin Collection Carnotaurus, who, nice figure, really nicely balanced, but the arms are too, too long. Uh, people say, what's one of the fastest dinosaurs? I would say this is one of the fast non solarosaurs The dinosaurs who like the raptors and the ostrich ones looking, those are all solarosaurs. They are pretty fast, but this is one of the faster non solarosaur dinosaurs because they have such long legs. This is South America. Scorpio Venator is also South America. Uh, this guy here is from India, so it's a uh, Rajasaurus, so it's another Abelosaur. I think the nose is too, too long for this one. Uh, Quilmiosaurus is in South America, too. And, of course, we have Rugops, which is from North Africa. So this guy would have lived with, like, Spinosaurus and Carcarnotosaurus. And so these should be closer to the size of these guys. And this one, again, I, I did a video on this, but I didn't upload it because it was just... The figure was just too upsetting. Uh, it has two fingers, like a T-Rex or a Tyrannosaur, 
its tail. I think they were trying to make a smaller figure to fit in, but they did it with Quimiosaurus, which only has one femur bone. Last I checked, they found one leg bone. They're like a bell sore. I will, I will go off of that. There's a video on this one too, actually. But the idea is that these are the Abelator group. And so the cool thing with the paleontologists is none of these animals we have the entire skeleton of. So you take, you can tell they're all related to each other. You compare their anatomy, basically. So yes, I mean, a wolf and a Great Dane and a Chihuahua are, diff are, just, are, are, are in the same genus, canis, but they are different in their personality. These guys are close enough together to be like, yeah, if, he hit, if we're missing some leg or tail bones from here, this guy has one. We can kind of compare them that way until we find more. And so that's the family tree it falls into. And again, I mentioned this before in other videos, the Abelosaurus have a huge representation. In, I mean, I don't have, I think I have a figure for this, this, and that one that are non-Jurassic World. So they're not really well represented in the toy world and usually smaller figures. So that's kind of important to me to show off that. And again, uh, Majungasaurus is the most famous, not the most famous, one of the most famous. I would say Carnotaurus is the most famous. It's probably the second most famous Abelosaur people know of in the pop culture. So it's a surprise that it got two toys in Jurassic World. Uh, that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.